One of the first questions that people ask when they want to get into programming is, what programming language should I learn first? And it makes total sense because you want to make sure that you're learning the right language. You want to make sure you're learning one that's not too hard and one that actually helps you get better at programming. And you don't know what's out there. You don't know the kinds of languages they are. You don't know what the purpose is of each language. So this question to makes total sense. In this video, I'll be going over why this is the wrong first question to ask as an aspiring programmer. Then I'll go over my personal recommendation on which programming language you should learn first. And then lastly, I'll be explaining why the first language you learn may not even matter that much. So let's get started. So why might this be a wrong question to ask as a beginner? And it's not to say that this is a bad question, but the reason I, I, I say it's a wrong question is because there's a better question. And that better question is, what are you trying to build? Knowing what software you're trying to build is really key in determining what programming language you're going to use. For example, if you want to build a web application, you should probably learn JavaScript. Or if you want to do some data analysis, you should probably learn Python. And then if you want to do some embedded software development, then you should use you should learn C or C++. And then if you want to learn how to build a Android Android app, then you should learn Java. So it depends on what you're trying to build and depending on that that will determine which programming language you should learn first. I see a lot of people programming and learning a programming language and then they don't really know why they're learning that language. And then when they're finished learning the language, they're, they say or they ask the question, what should I do next? And to me, that that's kind of like a face palm. It's like, well, why did you try to learn that language if you don't really know what you're trying to build? You should really know what you're trying to build first. It's kind of like trying to learn a language, a verbal language, and then you don't know who you want to talk to yet, but you just want to learn the verbal language, but you don't really have a goal. You really need to know who you want to talk to, and then based on who you want to talk to, figure out what language to use to speak or which language to learn to speak to that person. Maybe you are that kind of person where you don't really have a goal yet, but you just want you just know that you want to become a software developer. You just want to know that you you just know that you want to program. If that's the case, I, I recommend you look at your previous experience or your your previous careers or your background. And then based on your background, try to find an intersection with software development and then start learning how to code based on that. For example, if you're really artsy or you're creative, maybe you want to get into UI UX design, then you should learn JavaScript. Or maybe you're in a career where there are a lot of tasks there that you think can be automated by some type of program. For example, if you're in IT or networking, or maybe you're in customer service or project management, there's a lot of tasks there that you think you can get a program to do it, but you don't know how to program, then that's a good opportunity to learn Python because Python has a lot of ways that, it has a lot of tools for automation. So that can be a really good place to start at your current industry or your current field. Start thinking of some type of software application that you can build that can actually help your current career. And then maybe that can segue into your next software development career. Because when you leverage your previous background, you'll have an edge over other developers because you have that background. Something that I like to say to new programmers is that you should learn as far as you want or as far as you need. And all that to say is you really need to figure out what you're trying to build and then or what you want to build and then you only need to learn what you need to know to build those things and then you don't have to learn a bunch of random programming concepts that are not really important or concepts that you will never need in the future now if you really plan to become a professional software developer then i really think that you should learn c and that's because c really helps you understand how computers think the other languages like java and python that i mentioned those kinds of languages or JavaScript, those kinds of languages are more high level and then C is more low level. And what that means is C really helps you understand more what the computer is actually doing. And then those higher level languages, they kind of abstract away those lower level concepts. I asked ChatGPT if it could give me a really good analogy to explain what it means to be a higher level language versus a lower level language. And it gave me this really cool analogy of a chef. A higher level language is more like you're telling a skilled chef what you want it to build or what you want it to cook and what kind of meals you want it to make. But a lower level language is like you are the master chef and you know exactly what ingredients are needed to make this really good meal. And so if you want to become a professional software developer, I think you really need to know how to make that meal first. And when you're really good at making those meals, then maybe you can move on to the higher level languages where you're instructing a really skilled chef to make those meals. 
By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. The reason why I made this coding challenge centered around C is because when you learn C, it's easier to pick up other programming languages. And this was my experience. When I was in university, I only learned C. And then when I went into the software industry, when I got my first software job, I only knew C. But when I went to that job, they asked me to code in a variety of different programming languages. They asked me to code in C++ first, then they asked me to code in Python, then they asked me to code in C++, Python, and Java, and they put me in charge of the GUI application, so I was coding mostly in Java. And then they asked me to do some Android development, so I started coding in Java. And then after that, they put me in charge of a web application, and then so I started learning JavaScript too. And then as I was learning more and more, um, I eventually got into C Sharp too. And I could do all these things because I had a good background in C. A lot of people say that Python is a better programming language to start with. And it makes a lot of sense because you can use it for a variety of different applications. And like I mentioned earlier, you can use it for automation. You can also use it for data analysis. And those are really practical in the current field or current career that you're in. And if that's, if that's you, then go ahead and learn Python first because they can, then you can apply it right away. And C is not really, it's not as good as Python when it comes to those things. But I think if you really want to become a software developer, you should learn C because it really gives you that, like I said, that lower level understanding of how computers think. And now at the end of the day, having said all that, I think it actually doesn't really matter too much which programming language you learn first. If you look online or if you see a lot of other developers, they usually, they usually know more than one language. They know C or maybe they know Java and then they know Python. You learn more than one. And a lot of the programming concepts that you learn in one your first programming language, you're going to bring them over to your next programming language. Like when I learned C, I could bring that the, those programming concepts over to C++, to Java, to Python. Eventually, when you start coding a lot and you become a professional software developer, you don't think in terms of your programming language. You think more in terms of software, general software, general programming concepts. And you think, what are you? What do you want to build? And then you try. You look for the programming language that suits that what you're trying to build the best. And then you code it in that language. And you start to. You don't really start to code everything in that one language that you learned first. You start coding in whichever language is most convenient for you and what you're trying to build. And when you learn that first programming language, it'll be easy to pick up that second language really fast. And when you learn the second language, it's easy to pick up the third language, etc, etc. And I bet even when you start working, if you find a job, you might not even code in any language that you have had experience in. For example, in my other job, oh, I had all this experience in C++, Python and JavaScript. And then what did they ask me to do? They asked me to code in C Sharp. And I had no experience in C Sharp, but they knew that I could code. They knew I had some software development experience. And that's all that really matters to them. The important thing that I want you to get from this video is just to start learning how to program. And then when you start learning some programming skills, and then maybe you have an idea of what you want to build, then you can easily switch the programming language to another one that's more suitable to what you're trying to build and then learn that. And like I said earlier, learn as far as you want and as far as you need. Don't stress about learning all these concepts, all these programming concepts, if you're not going to use them. That's why it's important to know what you're trying to build, because then you really know what concepts you should really be focusing on. And how about you? Which programming language are you learning right now? I'd love to hear which language you're learning and why you chose that language. And if you don't have a programming language yet, which one are you thinking to start learning? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have no idea whatsoever, or maybe you want you just want to get better at programming, I have that 30 day beginner coding challenge. And in that challenge, I guide you through four programming projects. 
and then I give you some tutorials in C. But of course you can code it in whatever programming language you want. But these are really four fun programming projects that you can build and they're beginner friendly. And of course, if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts and then you'll be able to learn how to program in other languages as well. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I really appreciate you. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section. If you have an idea for a video that you want me to make, feel free to let me know in the comments section. And until next time, peace. Thank you.